that's all it is. All right, so what's cracking? Any um, any earnings? No, right? Any more SEs going up 11 points? Nothing? All right, so let's talk um, a little bit about what went on today. Today wasn't too bad. And uh, I think the reason why was we had this you had a little slip. You know, you had a little quick rinse there early morning. Uh, usually, you know, the sweepers come out buying it. You have some decent momentum to about maybe 11 o'clock. Uh, and then, you know, things just go dead. Uh, went dead pretty early today. And then you had a little bit of, you know, a little bearish price action. Not much put action, though. Uh, but... You, know, you had some weak price action set up this beauty of a niner and sweepers were a little slow to react right we, we didn't see an uptick in buying come into this niner per se uh but as uh, the price action improved we started to see the best order flow of the day okay for what it was worth um and there were some nice moves again Today was a good day, okay, because you got a little bit of everything. Uh, those of you who like to play mostly options, intraday, uh, the high beta, the big guys, you had Amazon, right, which was killer today. Um, meaning, oh, I'm talking about momentum now. Uh, you know, other spots as well. Those of you who like to play similar to the way I play as far as day trading is concerned, um, and where, you know, I let the action kind of come to me. I like the underbelly stuff, uh, the stuff I feel I can get an edge off of if they come in and start to aggressively buy. Um, and there were, there were quite a few names today. I mean, I played a decent amount of action today. Um, so it was a decent day compared to some of the more recent days. Uh, just quickly, like I'll give you an example, uh, VST, anybody who's following the flow, uh, knows what I'm talking about today. Um, yes, I didn't play Donkey Kong, which was really nice as well, but I played um, uh, this WKHS, really just exploded right off the bat, right off the action. Uh, so that was nice. Um, I also played, let me see, VST. What was the other one? The other one was, I'm drawing blanks here. What was the other name today? Hold on. Oh, RKT. Actually, and I'm still in some RK, RKT equity uh, that I'm going to, you know, try to hold on to for a little bit, see if I could get lucky. BE, I got in for a scalp um, just because I had to chase green, and I could have got a lot more than a scalp. But that, that thing was – I'm kind of kicking myself – for not being in this thing, because you had this breather and it caught some nice action. Again, I thought it was just an energy name. You know, similar to like that ENPH, if you guys remember, caught a lot of flow and then before I knew what they did, it was too late. Um, similar here, so you have BE, which if you just look at it, looks like just an energy play, which I would never touch, but they do the same thing like the WKHS tree the batteries and stuff, the hottest group on the street right now. Um, and, and on top of that, uh, this morning before the market opened pre-market, Jeff Immelt, the former CEO of GE, is an insider and bought a ton of stock. And that's why the stock gapped up a bit off the open. So, you know, really interesting Backdrop, interesting story here. Tree, it happens too much to me. Too much where I think, I can't say it's laziness. It's kind of like I'm tied up in the middle of the day. And then when I should be getting around to it later on, when things get quiet, I don't do it for some reason. And that's where the laziness kicks in. Uh, I'll give you guys another one, Tree. You probably saw action in recently. No. I keep screwing up the symbol. How am I going to end up buying it? 
Wait. G W no. G R W R? No. There it is. Got it. Okay. So this thing's catching action, right? Catches a couple little sweeps. We're like, what the hell is this thing? Hardly even, I don't even take a second look at it. Okay, and the action was small. Then you get this big day. Initially, more sweeper activity. Now, you know, a couple of us in the room are scratching our heads like, well, what is this? What's going on here? You know, maybe we're thinking it's an ag play, mosaic, had some momentum recently. So again, you know, wasn't too interested in that, but it started to make sense. Now I find out, you know, it's tied to the weed game, right? Weed gardening, as they call it. Uh, it was on Kramer last night. So, you know, kind of the only name, the only pure play on that, on that, on that product right now, right? Weed gardening. Uh, and that's why you have, you know, a stock go from eight basically to 20. All right, so this is the kind of stuff, like when we get to this type of market here, unlike most of you guys out there that are playing, focusing in on um, the Tesla and the uh, Amazon and the Apples and trying to milk whatever you can get out of that, you know, there's some big moves, you're getting robbed on the options, so you need the big move, right, to get paid in, in those big guys right now. I feel a lot more comfortable in you know, the underbelly names where I can control the equity, stop loss, that sort of thing. If I really like it, maybe I'll hold some overnight and see, you know, if I can catch a move, uh, some follow through over the short term. Uh, but that's been the extent of what I've been doing, you know. And, you know, like Tree was saying on the Sunday webinar, I had no complaints. Like, that's what's going on right now. Like, See, for me, Amazon is not going to get, it's not going to create any FOMO in me, okay? Because that's not, that's not my niche, right? That's not what I partake in anyhow when I'm, when I'm doing well um, playing this game, okay? So that doesn't bother me. But, and a couple of you have been asking me this, like, what, what's going to be the deciding factor for me to go back swinging calls, right? New positions, and for me, like the risk reward has got, has to be more enticing than what I'm actively doing right now. You know what I mean? Like the reward is always going to be bigger and always going to be more rewarding on swing positions the longer you hold them, right? There's a bigger reward there. But there are times where there's a lot more risk that comes when trying to catch that reward, right? So right now you have that, as we've been discussing um, for since the start of earnings season, you have that additional risk out there right now in swing trading, all right? And it, for me, right, I'm, until, and the likelihood is it's got, it's got, it has to be some sort of washout or pullback or a just a massive rotation, um, for me, it's just not enticing enough. You know, it's not enticing. You need a lot. It, it, it's been a little better of late since earnings are out of the picture, but you, you still, the luck factor is still pretty big right now in, ca in cashing a nice ticket. You know what I mean? You still need, you need to catch a break and be in the right name at the right time. Okay, and you know, that's that added risk. We had earnings as well. So thank God for the most part, we still got NVIDIA, but for the most part, you have earnings out of the way a bit because that was just another risk on top of it where I wasn't going to swing anything. So that's gone. Um, now it's just a matter of, you know, what they're buying. So let's talk about that a little bit. What's been amazing Okay, and I don't know what leads what. And you can call me nuts, conspiracy theorist, but I really believe the game works like this, okay? I don't know if the market 
doesn't want to pull back because it it just refuses to pay riffraff on the short side. Okay. And that's why the market's doing what it's doing in regards to rotation or it's the other way around. Okay. And what I mean by that is this, okay. You had, right, the S&P 500 pretty much still an overall view on, on everything. Okay. For now. Okay. But recently, and we were talking about this on Sunday, right? You had some leadership groups, okay? Some stuff that led this rally initially cool off and come in a bit, all right? So even though you you hadn't had anything close to a pullback, right, of recent in this month, okay? You had the gold miners, which, you know, were one of the first and few to go moonshot on us, right? Nice, healthy wash. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is this is what we wanted and still want out of, out of the overall market. Something like this would set up everything beautifully, right? This entry, sweeper activity, short-term sentiment on your side again, boom, the snapback would be powerful and very rewarding, okay? We haven't got that in the S&P 500, okay? But little groups here and there, and even not even major groups, subsectors, you, you are getting that. And this constant rotation, rather than everything or most of, most of these groups getting washed out at once, where you would see that in the S&P 500, you're seeing, you're just seeing it done kind of randomly in a sense, okay? So the gold miners, they got a little too hot, perfect little cleansing. If you were eyeing the gold miners, you had a real nice entry, right? We saw a couple of the names they love to hit. We saw some flow there, so some ETF there. You know, that's what you were looking for, okay? You may not have been looking at the gold miners. I didn't play any gold miners, even though I like the spot there. You know, we were talking about this on Sunday. Um, but that's a group uh, that set up nicely, even though the market didn't pull back, right? Tech, you had a lot of people talking about this rotation out of tech completely, right? Tech is done, you know? Even we, we were discussing it. Maybe now is going to be a point in time where tech, you know, just cools off a bit and they rotate into some of the value and cyclical names, okay? That happened, right? We saw that rotation. But what followed once the cyclical and value names put together a nice three, four day run, they allowed them to breathe and they came right back into tech, right? And you can see now, right? They come right back into Amazon. They came right back to Tesla. And granted, you have splits and all sorts of forces out there at play. But that's what's been going on in, in not allowing the indices altogether to rinse, which would create a nice setup, okay? They can do this for a lot longer than you think. Coming out of 2009, it felt like this was being, it felt like it was never going to stop. This constant rotation every couple days, every week that held up the indices. Okay. Eventually something comes around where it cracks. A lot of times it's on the sentiment side being just full, right? Because what people do, they think they catch on. You're starting to hear it on CNBC. So you hear about the barbell strategy, right? I'm going to buy some growth stuff, but I'm going to buy some value and cyclical stuff as well. So when one needs to breathe, the other will go higher, right? And they think, oh, I got a nice little plan here. That's when they get hit over the head and everything goes south. And then they lose money on both, right? Where they thought they were going to make money on both or were at least hedged in the sense they lose money on both. Right, so the market's kind of drawing players into that mentality right now. 
All right. So anyway, that's that's where I'm at. That's what I feel like I'm looking at. What I, I'm trying to make sense of what's going on out there. And I think for me, and we talked about this on Sunday, right? Why can't I get out of this chart and give me a pain? Hang on a second. Oh, there we go. All right. This is kind of what we're looking at and I think need to look at. Okay. So let's start with this first. We got all the clowns. We can make a circus here, right? So here are hedge funds. Okay. And this is where they are now. Okay. They're close enough to being in the pool where they were supposed to be a long time ago. All right. So that's, that's a risk, right? That's a risk that if we do get some sort of pullback, you got to be careful that that pull that buy the dip mentality may not be in play anymore. Okay. Because now you have a lot of possible supply out there. The missing link out of all this now where Remember, we spoke about this throughout this whole rally, the, where this story ends, right? It usually, or it always has the same ending. May not take as long, or sometimes it takes longer, but it usually ends up with everybody in the freaking pool. And then the market gods will take care of business, right? So we have the riffraff in the futures market, who been trying to outsmart this market on the short side all the way from back here, as you can see here, okay? Holding on to shorts. And I don't, like even for a little pullback, right? Again, I don't mean to sound repetitive, but not everybody who was on the webinar Sunday is on this one. We need to see something like this before we can get the wash we all want. I'm convinced that it's not a given. It's not a lock. Obviously it doesn't, you know, it's my opinion, right? It's not a guarantee. But for me, I feel like it's not a coincidence that this here, when the riffraff money panicked and covered a chunk of their shorts, this was the last pullback and consolidation we've had in this market. Okay. So that's what I'm looking for. Right. And here's where, again, now, you know, at this point in the rally, we knew we were going to get here. Right. And hopefully you've made money along the whole way. Right. If you stayed bullish, again, we talk about this all the time. You may have regrets. We all do. Shouldn't have sold this, should have bought this. I should have gotten more aggressive. I, but the bottom line is the likelihood is you made a decent amount of money if you paid attention to your signals and remained bullish literally right off those lows. All right. Now we have to start paying more attention to the risks out there. Okay. We can't be as sloppy. We can't buy and oh if i if we do get a pullback we'll just add or add more on the dip we can't have that same approach anymore okay because things are changing all right so we have to keep a close oh, close eye and close tabs on things and this right now is pretty much what i'm totally focusing on this crowd and how they're positioned Okay, so and, and this all goes to the swing trading, right? And where you ask me, you know, what will change, what will it take for me to start swing trading again or getting aggressive? This is my concern, right? So I can go today and buy everything I day traded today. I can open up swing positions in. Okay, then what happens Friday? I see this. What should I do? I got to sell everything, right? That's basically what I got to do. So you understand? That's what's on my mind here. So instead, what I say to myself, instead of worrying about coming out of option positions, some of them may not be as liquid. I got to look for bids because I'm selling when I don't want to be selling, 
right? Right now I'm sticking with equity, primarily day trading. And if I'm looking to get a little frisky, I'll hold on to a piece of the equity, see if I can get a little bit more, right? I have more control over things. That's how I feel. All right, but that, this is, that's my concern. Okay, that's my concern. And it may just be a bump like this, okay? Where they just get squeezed out of a big portion of their shorts. But like that opens up a window now, in my opinion, for a decent wash. And what I mean decent wash, considering the move, at least a five to 10% wash, that would be peanuts, right? So I'm, I, me being content with how this rally has turned out, why would, you know, why would I want to stick out my neck and roll the dice and try to get caught in a big way, right? Off of something like that. So instead, I'm trying to be prudent. I'm, you know, I'm still long, right? I still got a decent size, you know, full position and plan. I still got little pieces of other stuff, nothing major. So I still have long exposure, even though it may not be near as much as I had. And I'm looking to take advantage of intraday action that's been, you know, quite rewarding. Like I told you guys before, if it wasn't, I'd be complaining about it and I'd be honest about it. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit here and lie and say, you know, just to make me feel better about it. The intraday action, it's slowed down a bit of recent, but the intraday action has been pretty solid. So this, this chart, for those of you who may not know <laughs> what this stands for, can you imagine you're looking at this chart for the first time? You're like, what is this whack job talking about? He's got a hobo the clown emoji on some graph and he's talking riffraff. Let me get off this webinar, right? Who is this guy? So basically um, what this is, is this is the spec positioning in the futures market. Okay, and futures contracts. So what this tells us down here in the green zone here, okay, Spec money is short index futures. Up here, they would be long to an extreme of index futures, right? So these are extremes. So here they're extremely short. Here they would be extremely long. All right. And this pretty much along with some other stuff, but this has been the foundation of why no matter how negative the backdrop was, no matter how scary the virus was, the price action, the economy and everything else, this is a very big reason of why we were forcing ourselves to lean bullish throughout this whole entire mess. Okay. And the logic was that if specs are positioned for Armageddon, the likely scenario is gonna, not going to be Armageddon and things will turn out okay. You know? And, you know, things have turned out okay. Think for, considering where we were, things have turned out okay. All right, but that's a whole other story anyway, uh, you know, thanks to the Fed and everything else. All right, but that, this is my concern. So this is um, this would be one of my smaller concerns, right? You get a, just a squeeze out of here. My larger concern would be just one of these, <laughs> right? This, see that? From bing to bing, from one extreme to the other, and my goal, okay, especially off the combined Sharpie riffraff indicator we look at, 
when that gets even close to this red line, I want to be in, if I could have my way, all cash. Right? You know, maybe hold little runners I'm holding on to, but for the most part, all cash. And if the market wants to continue to melt up right in my face, I couldn't give, excuse my French, a rat's ass. You know, couldn't give a rat's ass. Let it do it because I know, you know, there's a nice size beating coming from my experience around the corner. Um, anybody, you know, and if you're members, you should be on the Sunday webinar as well. I mean, that's where we can get in great detail. But anybody, especially members, anybody have any questions on, you know, what I'm concerned about here? Do you understand why I'm not aggressively building swing positions in everything that I'm day trading and I like? Yeah, we'll talk about McElliott. Definitely, we'll talk about McElliott. Yes. Wow, everybody wants to talk about McElliott. All right, very good. All right, so everybody gets this part here, right? Because in my opinion, it's a lot more important, but we'll talk about McElliott. Okay, good. Um, what happened on June 11th for shorts to capitulate? Nothing. It's just the market, the rally warm out. You know, there's not necessarily an exact reason. Uh, if you look, this chart is bothering me. Why does it do this? Oh, here we go. If you look on the 11th, you know, we were just here into the highs. And that's where they usually feel the most pain and capitulate, right? Literally, this whole red zone right here. And then you had this, you know, the wash, which was digested for a little bit longer. And this was a great setup that led to this rally coming out. You know? All right, so... Um, before we get into McElliott, what I would recommend doing, okay, for as long as we melt up here and everything stays the same, right, if there are no changes in what we look at, you got to try to anticipate, you know, where the money may go next. That's kind of what this market's doing. So in other words, you can be nimble and you can get in the middle of FANG when they're buying it. Okay, but you don't want to overstay your welcome type of thing, right? Because there's a lot of inflated premium that's going to come out of it. It only takes one down day and whatever you're in is going to get walloped. All right, so you want to try to make your money while it's hot, be a little early on the sell side, and then look to where the money may go next. You know, so you have software names that have actually been in breather mode you know, maybe they find some of those names next. You have some of the names that look good. Like, remember, Tree, we were talking about uh, the Dow, DuPont, and all these names. They've gone into, look, another breather. Right, exactly. So we want to look for signs out of hopefully sweeper activity, especially now that it's earnings, uh, post earnings, um, that money may come back into some of these. And, you know, you're either going to want to play an ETF or you really want to get stock specific because these names are, a lot of these names are in big trouble. I think that's part of the problem is that, you know, we've had a crash off this virus and you have new leaders emerging for a reason, right? The economy has fundamentally changed and the damage that it's done to some of these grandpa names could be lifelong. You know, so you kind of want to be a little picky in um, the names you're looking on the other side of rotation. Again, just makes things a little, yeah, like the banks, okay? Like the, no matter what, like even a rally in the banks, they're going to be tough. You know, they, it's going to be a stressful ride. So you, you either got to close your nose, close your eyes, hold your nose, and you know, buy with some time and not concern yourself of how they may act in the interim or look for just better acting, better looking rotation names. You know, they, they exist, 
right? So instead of like trying to nail a bottom on the banks, you know, this needs to breathe, but you got a name like UNP, right? Or a couple of you mentioned deer you guys played or um, even Caterpillar, you know? At least you see what's going on with these things for now anyway? Constructive, right? Constructive price action. They're not doing what Tesla, Amazon, and stay-at-home names have been doing. They go like this, right? But look, this is not... This is very constructive. So that's where you kind of want to kind of want to look to, you know. But it's selective, so that's why it makes it a little trickier. We got to be stock pickers. We got to be stock pickers. Yeah, the Catholic cyclicals. There, is there a cat? Is there such thing, or you just you just randomly mention that? It's is she, does she have certain cyclicals she likes? Oh, you just created it. Nice, I like it. But it's the truth, it's the truth, you know? It's the truth. I don't know if she's targeting, I know like she bought Caterpillar and stuff like that. Um, it's not really her thing. Um, but if she is targeting certain cyclicals, find them, yeah. Take your time, take your time. Take your time. True? I saw that on the list. What is that? TransUnion. Hey, you see though? Constructor, right? Compared to like you, like Wells Fargo caught a big Jan bet, you know? And I'm not going to lie to you. I contemplated. I said, you know, should I just buy this thing? They're Jans. Just don't even look at it. Buy a little and then, but what? Like, why do I want to torture myself, right? How many times did I attempt to do that in energy, right, over the years? It's just, oh, I, I don't have the brain for it right now. And I usually do. I don't have the interest in it. How about that? I don't have the interest in it. I don't have the interest in it. Yeah, well, let's, let's do one thing at a time here. Before we talk about names, let's talk about McElliot, because quite a few of you were asking about McElliot. All right, and gamma, and, and how that sets up. Uh, so basically, here's how it goes. We have a big expiration Friday, right? Monthly expiration, August, okay? There is a chunk of open interest that's likely going to roll off with expiration, okay? What that means is the reason, or I should say at least one of the reasons why you're getting this sticky melt up that we've been talking about, okay, is gamma related, right? And what McElliot's talk, McElliot was talking about that. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, he talked about this being a strong possibility, right? You get that melt up into August expiration. So now what that the gamma gang is um, talking about as well is come expiration, you get with the gamma rolling off with expiration, you're going to get that window of possibly added volatility or more movement in price action. Okay, doesn't mean a market crash, right? It doesn't mean all the gamma gets rolled off. Could I mean it could roll actually, and we won't know that till actually Friday morning, but. What usually happens, okay, and this is why I wanted to post that note that I did earlier this morning and then touch base on it. When you do get the melt up into expiration, sometimes, okay, you'll get the smart money front running that possible wash, okay? So what I recommend is after the Fed minutes, which is tomorrow, so going into Thursday, I would keep an eye out for that possible washout and rinse that McElliott's talking about because of gamma coming off with expiration. Okay, they like to front run it, right? So think about it, it makes sense, right? You know how like the pension buying, 
that we look at from time to time, right? We like to front run the public when they're ready to pay attention to that pension money, right? Usually happens before everyone starts looking at it. So the same thing here. If everybody's going to start talking about Gamma opening up a possible window for a rinse come Friday, what do you think the smart money is going to do? I think they're going to front on that. While everyone's waiting for Friday, they might rinse them before that. So that's what I would keep an eye out for. Um, and that's what McElliott and a lot of the Gamma, the Gamma crew is talking about. You know, but from the people I follow and talk to in regards to Gamma, you know, they see nothing right now, you know, no sign of crash risk, no sign of people offside. Um, you remember we talked about just players shorting volatility to an extreme that becomes a real problem? That hasn't even happened yet. That hasn't happened yet. Like, we're just starting to see the start of it. You know, so I don't think, you know, from what I'm hearing, it's not, you know, something that's going to lead to something major, but maybe could be that catalyst for a rinse, right, at the end of the week. So does that make sense? Well, Tree, what are you asking? What are, what about the signs of regime change he talked about? Oh, oh, oh. So in other words, what he's saying is if you, if we do get that rinse, Tree, that that's going to be a catalyst for rotation into the cyclicals and you get that outperformance that everyone keeps telling us it's going to happen. That's what he's talking about, regime change. So from, I think I posted on my, uh, oh, I posted on here too. Wait, I'll show you. So basically what he's saying is, it would line up with the end of August that cyclicals outperform off of that. Hold on. And that's what he meant by that. See here? So you see what he's got marked off? Financials, materials, industrials, energy, transports. And then you can look here and see how they usually perform. McElliott does that with everything, everything. Like when he, when he sees something, a scenario playing out, he'll go and see and back test and look in the past, you know, when that scenario played out, what did they do? You know, and then he's got numbers all over the place. So he sees this scenario possibly playing out at the end of this week being the start of a regime change and he wants to know how that performed in the past, and they have outperformed. So that's what he's uh, talking about. Yeah, Kalanovic, same thing. They, they fry this game into numbers like nobody else. They were awesome. XLI, yeah. And you know, it, especially if the market's going to continue to melt up tree, why is this chart doing this? You know what I mean? You're going to get that catch up. You're going to get that catch up out of small caps and uh, and the industrials. You know, like look look how good that looks, right? Looks good. Looks good. I know Kalanovich is nuts. He's nuts, right? He's like a rocket scientist. He's nuts. But he's awesome. I love both of them. Anyway, all right, so that's keep an eye out. Tomorrow we get the Fed minutes. So going into Thursday, keep an eye out of some signs of deterioration. You know, like today, breath was pretty bad for an up day. You know, there was, it was awful. You start to get some red in the indices and breath start to deteriorate. Maybe we get that one, two day wash where you get six to one losers to winners, you know, declines to advances. So that, those would be the things to keep an eye out for. Yeah, they look, they look good, you know, and it, it could be 
the start of rotation into these things. It would be nice. You know, it would be nice. Even though I like all the other, you know, I like playing all the other stuff so much better. You know, I, they move when you hit a, when you catch a winner, it's usually a nice winner. But, you know, just a lot of these things are fried to where I don't feel comfortable holding too long. Yeah, you got to have patience. Exactly. You got to have patience. All right. So let's, on that note, let's talk about um, some names, right? Uh, we've been seeing, you know, okay action. I wouldn't say um, flow was, I wouldn't say flow is anything incredible. And the reason why is because I think a lot of these names, like today, right? We see Amazon catch like decent size orders, right? Bull bets. And, you know, I mean, everybody in their mother is looking at Amazon. You know, so like, I feel like I have zero edge, even with the flow in a name like this right now. Zero edge. Like everybody in their mother is looking at Amazon today. Like, I'm going to make a play on Amazon because it caught a sweep. You know, it's silly. It's silly. Silly. So that, that's, you know, that's my, why I'm reluctant in some of these names. Now, granted, you trade them, you make money in them. Just, they're stocks just like everything else. I just don't, I feel like I don't have an edge. That's all. You know, but the action, like we're seeing, we're seeing action like that. It's more like size spec action we're seeing. You know, we're seeing a lot of short dated, um, orders that actually could be decent dollar amount bets. All right. And it's almost like they're playing musical chairs out there, right? They're almost playing musical chairs out there. Uh, waiting for the music to stop. We're showing signs of stop and they're just right in the way. Oh, but, you know, momentum wise, there, there's some decent stuff and there's some decent setups. That's why I'm curious to see what names you guys are looking at. You know, quite a few names like even these things that I was playing today, like VST, you know, who the hell wants to own a utility in this is beyond my mind. But you know what I'm saying? Spot wise, that was a really nice spot. That's why I had to play it even for a day trade. You know, you had some of even these smaller names, right? Um, that have cooled off and, you know, or gone sideways where, you know what I'm saying? You got a base to play off of. You're not chasing a rip. Um, even like this name that's come in, right? Sono. Right? You just, you're getting little dips in these things where they look a lot better. They Teladoc, right? You got that dip. That you can even, and this is what we were talking about last Tuesday. Remember the snapback rally? Here it is. Okay. Now, if you're playing for new highs, there's a lot more risk, right? Obviously from the time, because you got to hold on for more time. So that raises the odds that you might get caught in a wash, like McGilliott's talking about. All right. And for other reasons, because this thing may be in consolidation still, and all it's doing is this, right? Well, it digests some big gains. But the snapback is always there in the in these leaders. Always. Always. Because there's always an interest, right? And there's always money on the sidelines that wants to get in these names. And shorts get squeezed. You know, that's what constantly happens in these names. Remember like the CRMs of the world we used to do it a lot with? Anytime it dipped, you knew you'd get that snapback, even if it was in consolidation. You know, it was money for that CRM. You know, when it was heating up, when it became a new leader. So, yeah, it, there you go. Like, Tesla is an, a league of its own. But, like, look at the Zoom, right? And this was even a little more now. Like, look at, look at these snapbacks. and We were just talking about Zoom, I, what was it, last week? that big move off a dip. You know how many times it's done that now? Look at this. So these things are, 
legit, you know, they're legit. And even if they're going to cool off, you're going to get these opportunities off sweeper activity. Now, I wouldn't play them without sweeper activity, but that's me, right? I want to see some signs of sweepers coming in and playing for a bounce or looking to squeeze shorts. Yeah, I mean, Micron is, you know, that's not in the, in this category. Micron is a tough stop. Micron's chop suey, out of favor right now. You know, Micron, you're, you're buying and you want some time and leave it alone type thing. If you're going to trade, there's easier stuff to trade than Micron. You know what I mean? Easier stuff to trade. You got, you got a list of leaders, list of leaders that, you know, go up and down every week very smoothly. What's that been doing though, Fastly? Huh. Right? So hypothetically, right? And I know we've seen mixed action. Sometimes there's been a sweep here and there that led to a nice squeeze. But let's just say we walk in tomorrow morning and boom, boom, boom. Right off the open, we see two, three cute, fastly sweepers come in, right? Stocks up 20, 30 cents. The market just open, nothing going on. It's dead. You know, you got, again, you got that opportunity for a snapback. How large, how, you know, how big, how far it goes. That's a whole different ball game. <clears throat> but very easily, it can do something like this. And something like this, that's a, that's a rewarding trade right there. You know, like for the money, for the move, you're going to see there, Micron, you need six weeks to, to catch that. Yeah, they're just tough, Havana. They're tough, you know. See, here's the thing. And you guys are probably saying, well, usually you like those tough names. You buy them with time. Not where we're at now. Not where we're at now. You know, for where? Because if the market, if the music stops, okay, if the music stops, if the riffraff go all in long and everybody's swimming in the pool, all slapping fives, and the music stops, everything's coming down. I don't care where Micron is. You understand? If tech is going to get knocked out, Micron's going with it. So it doesn't matter that Micron you're getting at a lower, at a niner right now. Does it make sense? You want to, you rather be in stuff that'll move. Okay? There, where you got a shot of making money quicker. You don't, right now you don't want, it's the complete opposite of where we were when Sharpies got long for the first time and Riff Raff got short and all bullish sentiment signals we had, right? Here, right here, the complete opposite. Here, we wanted to buy anything that was beaten up catching sweeper activity, right? Could you beat up a little bit more? Add, okay? Because what happened is everything got beat up so bad that if you're down, we feel like our downside is limited because of our signals, right? We have a floor here. And the upside, there's a ton of reward. Up here, if the music stops, our floor is gone. Kaput, there's no floor anymore. So it doesn't matter what you own, Micron, Fastly, right? If you're in options and they go to zero, what the hell's the difference? It means nothing. They, well, it's all the same. So you don't want to tie up, in my opinion, you don't want to tie up money in slow stuff right now until we get a wash and then reevaluate. 
Uh, at least that's what I'm doing. I'm not tying up anything. You know, and guys, I'm not talking those of you who may be investing out there in equities. You know, I'm talking right now, even though I think that's very similar now anyway, but I'm talking about people who are swing trading options. Calls going to zero, it's the same thing for all of us, no matter what you're in. Calls go to zero, we're even, both of us. No one gets hit worse than the other. I could have a stock that goes from 50 to two, my calls go to zero. You could have a stock that goes from 50 to 49 and your calls go to zero. You're no better off than I am. No? Right? So that's the bargains. The bargains right now, they're not as enticing. You know, they're not as enticing. That's the problem. Yeah, I agree, Ani. I think quick um, is the way to be right now. And I'll be honest with you guys. You guys know from um, pre-virus, okay? If, Ani, if we didn't have the Sharpie riffraff signal where it is, I... I would make sure I, I nothing I'd be holding overnight, ever. You understand? I'd be so cautious and careful. You know, day trades, you can put a, you got a handle on them. You know what I mean? But overnight stuff, that's, that's where you get, when the music stops and you're caught with a bag of calls, that's, that's what hurts. Yeah, that's what can hurt you. So you want, right now, you want to, what you want to do, because the riffraff is still short, you still want to play bullish, okay? But the key word is play. You're not looking to bring the market home with you. You know, you're not looking to make that big score that you got to stick your neck out, lean into a position, and if it goes against you, you get hurt. You know, you... You want to either grind it out or risk a lot less money and, and try to get a little lucky. That's what you want to try to do here. And there's still, you know, there's still stuff out there to do with, too. It's not like, you know, there's nothing out there to do. With. But the last thing you want, the last thing is you, that you want is to get caught up here with, you know, five, six positions deep or whatever may be substantial to you. And you give back all the money you made in this rally. Why the hell would you want to do that? Yeah, and that's the thing too, right? When they pull the rug, especially some of the names that you guys like to play that are, you know, junked up premium-wise to no end, you know what happens? You get caught in a rug pull and you own Amazon and Tesla calls? Oh, my God. Yeah, the premium will evaporate in minutes. Minutes. You won't even know what hit them before you wipe the crust out of your eye. You know, so you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You got to be not careful. You got to be smart. It's not even the careful part, smart. You know, you got to be smart. So, but the Ani, that's, that's the one thing, you know, that's the one thing um, that has me still, you know, still interested on the long side is because Sharpies are still long, Riffraff is short. And I feel that, you know, I almost feel like nothing bad can happen until that changes, but it can change quick. You know, so you got to be ready if it does change that you can adjust quickly. You know, could happen this Friday. We could see a change. Yeah, exactly. Watch them like a hawk. You know, the thing is to know what your what the risk is right now, right? You got to be aware of it. You don't want to be caught off guard and taken by surprise. That's, that's the key. As long as you're aware and you're prepared for it, 
you know, sometimes you're going to lose a little more money than you, you would like. Other times you'll be able to avoid it completely, but you'll get better at it each, each and every time. It's this game when you're caught off guard, right? You're caught six positions deep. And the last thing you were thinking about was a wash that can bury you. That's what buries you. Um, let me see. The let me see the tag the a lot of the short term um, indicators outside put the calls haven't been as as bad but that you know what it is Trey it's the uh, breath you know there's not a lot of participation so they've been not as hot as you would think they are right some of these things hold on a second let me see do I have you let me see bear with me. Usually sends it to me. I don't have it yet, but usually sends it to me. Um, but yeah, the breath has been. Yeah, well, that's the summer. Volume's been awful, you know. Volume's been awful. That's just the summer playing out here. Let me see. Hold on a second. Did you send it to me here? No. I don't have it yet. Uh, but, you know, even with the volume being awful, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record. There's been some nice moves. There's been some nice moves. There's been some nice moves. What other names have you guys been playing? Any other names that um, I haven't mentioned today? Ani, what biotechs are you in? Some of these biotechs. I wish I played more biotech this rally, that's for sure. La boo. That's where you go full tilt if you want to play biotech. La boo. Oops. You know, that's another one where, right, we were talking Sunday here. You got, you know, not anything magnificent yet, but you had a nice dip here. I think we had bullish sentiment, right? Short term sentiment. So even though the market was melting up, point being, GDX, biotech, cooled off. And this is not a bad entry at all. You know, not a bad entry at all. Um, TG, oh, the little guys, right? Those little biotechs. Oh, nice little rip. Oh, this is not that little anymore. 20-something dollars. I thought it was cheaper. It got hot, this thing. You know uh, what biotech, it already had that big run and then you had that short hit piece come out on it. But there's a lot of buying in this thing. S-R-N-E. Yeah, I thought, you know, I thought this was one of those you know, just really pumped up COVID plays. The CFO was fired. Is that what the guy started up that short piece over? Yeah. Oh, just now the CEO was fired? Ah, why? Why would they this? So that, you might have a dip in that tomorrow. That might be worth a look. We'll see if they bomb it again. You know, this, this thing had a killer move. You know, probably last, last time, look at the breather went into last time. I remember they were buying the daylights out of it here. I remember this day was nuts, right? You guys remember that day? That was a crazy day. And then look, you know, I just went into death for so long. That's why I hate, you know, revisiting names. Like the, the, the entry was here, right? That's where they started bombing it, right here, as it started to lift here. And then you get a big move like this. So now... You know, it's a little, it's a different story, but there's still a lot of flow in it. There's still a lot of flow. That's like this thing too. Otherwise, I would have bought this thing even for a swing. I traded this thing. You know how many times I've traded this name already? Not all successfully. Like I've taken some scratch trades in it too. As you can see, there's been some sideways nonsense. But you know, look, look at this move. Right? Huge move. 
So this is normal. This is actually impressive that this thing has done this. Because Kathy is buying every single dip. That's why, right? That's, that's why. Yeah, I never, you know, for me, I never, I, I, I worry every first swing that, see here, you could have thought that run was coming here. I think as this thing gets longer in the tooth, you have a shot at it, at it getting out again. You know, but it need it needed to digest, and that's what it's doing now. That's what it's doing now. But I'll tell you what, you know, I don't know if you're looking at the equity or the options. This thing, concrete floor, again, Kathy probably buying it, that's why. But I mean, this has been a great floor to play off of. No? And sometimes you get moves, like today's move was beautiful. A lot, did did a, a few you get you guys traded it today? No, I'm sure you guys traded it today. If I traded it, you guys definitely traded it. Yeah, that's why I figured. Because look, like this thing when it this thing could get hot, and look what it does here. This is a, this is no trend change. Big move. Make your day nice cash. Yeah, today was a lot better than the last couple of days. There hasn't been too much, you know, there were a couple of winners you really had to milk. Like yesterday, what was it? Uh, net. But you had to hold on to it for a little bit longer for a decent move. Um, what do you guys think of Visa? See, this this would be in that quality rotation theme. You understand? Yeah, this would be in that quality rotation theme. So I think like, for example, what McElliott's calling for a tree, I think Visa would be a play on that if you like Visa. Visa, yeah, MasterCard caught a little bit of action. MasterCard has been better, right? A little bit better. Actually got out of the consolidation. They usually move together, though. They usually move together. PayPal is the stud, Square, PayPal. Those are the new Visa and MasterCards. That's why, like, Visa and MasterCard, right? Look at this. That's what PayPal and Square probably are now. Like, look. See these moves? All right? Look at these moves. You got to be kidding me. Like, that's what PayPal and Square are. You realize that? And these corrections and breathers, look, even smaller ones, that's where you got to be ready. That's where you got to be ready. I love now. I love that stock. Every dip I love. Buy every little pink, 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 pink dip you could possibly get your hands on. You know? I love it. I love the stock. I love the stock. You know, the spot up here is not as great, but still looks solid, right? Still looks good. Still looks good. Faith. You go from one of my, I like a lot, to one of my least favorite, which looks better, though. Say he looks better, right? Have a good night, Trey. Say he looks better. You know, Spot's interesting, because Spot, you have um, this the Apple news, weighed on it a little bit, and you actually got a nice breather here. Granted, you know, this was insanity. But you got a nice breather here. Just a matter how long of a breather, you know? But if you like if you like it, like if you were waiting for the breather, you gotta you gotta be looking at it already here. Off a niner like that. 
You know what I mean? SE, tuck it away, it's going to $1,000. That's my new price target, 1000 I just slapped a thousand dollar price target on SE. <laughs> what a monster. What a monster. I wouldn't be talking to you guys if I had my initial position in SE. I'll tell you that much. I'd be on my own island somewhere. But I'm a degenerate, I'd still be day trading. Yeah, exactly, Paul. Exactly. But yeah, this this stock has come a long way, man. A long way. A long way. And a new leader. I mean, let's face it. A new leader. Doku. This is another beast. There's your snapback. There's your snapback. Unfortunately, was they, oh yeah, what were they buying? They were buying some weird calls, right, in Doku? Were they in the money or something? Anyway, whatever it was, this is the snapback. They were at the monies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so the question is, what does this turn into another run to highs? Or is this the start of consolidation, you know? So basically you can top out and then come back down here and then come back up, you know, that sort of thing. And chop around, find a bottom, and then maybe, you know, break out down the line. Or, you know, if it's not consolidation, obviously you're in, you go into these things. Right? And that's the uh, melt up for as long as it lasts. So that's what that's what's tough right now. That's what's tough. But the snapback guys, and you guys like to play these names. That's that's what you guys gotta be eyeing here. The snapbacks, make sure you get the decent spot and you know take what the market's willing to give you. Well, that's that's the thing. It becomes a what you're more comfortable with, you know? Like for me, when I want to be, when I want to have more control and be quick, I always play the equity. So I don't know if you guys notice, I never play weeklies. I never play hardly ever play monthlies. I, when I build a position on the, in the calls, I'm going out a few months at the least. If not, I'll just buy the equity. You understand? Because I feel like I have more control over it. I don't like to be put in a position where I got to try to stop myself out of calls when I don't want to, you know? Look for liquidity, that sort of thing. Like day trading, I could probably count on one hand how many times I've day traded calls. You know, if I do, it would be on, you know, these expensive names, obviously. Later on, uh, where, you know, the stock doesn't make any sense. But I, I like to, when I, you know, I like to, day trading wise, I like to be in control, you know, limit my downside, that sort of thing. And I like to, I like to play the equity. I like, because, you know, we, the risk reward is, you know, like, I'll give you an example, like VST today, right? All right, I bought the stock for a day trade. And like, what was the worst that was going to happen for me? If there was no momentum off that buying, right? The stock would go dead. And maybe, you know, I'm pulling the plug 20 cents, 30 cents downside. Okay? Right? If there is some momentum... I'm at least going to see that to the upside. If I catch some hype of a ponytail pump involved, you know, the reward's even better. 
sometimes you get lucky, you catch some chatter or something, and you get explosions. So that's my whole philosophy, day trading. You know, my big winners a lot of time come, I hate to use the word luck, but I get lucky. I don't plan for a big winner. Yeah. And, you know, always the lower price stocks, you should always try to day trade the equity. Well, sometimes, sometimes, it, you know, it's, it's tough when you're day trading. You know what happens to a lot of people I see? They buy... They buy these calls for a quarter and they're day trading them and the calls go to 40 cents, but they're not happy with that. You know what I mean? They want the 25 cents to go to a dollar. And that's, that's all fine and dandy if that's your game plan. But you got to understand, you know, your win-loss ratio is not going to be anywhere near what you expect it to be, right? Because you're looking for four times your money on the upside. So, you know, that, that's the thing. That's the thing. You know, but I like, I like to, when I day trade, I like to buy, you know, like, again, here, the example we used, this is an example. The other one's that workhorse. You know, if the stock's flat like it was, what, like, what's the worst that's going to happen here, right? What's the worst that's going to happen? It comes down and trades to this low, and, you know, I'm not holding it. That's it. I'm out. Right? So, my downside is that. And the upside was so quick today it was a beautiful thing. Look at it. Exactly, exactly. The premium, you know, especially if you're playing option names and stuff like that. Like NVIDIA, you know, trying to day trade NVIDIA right now, you need you need a huge winner to make money, right? You need a huge winner. No, I, I rarely go back in um, multiple times, Goku. I usually I, I play it the once, and then I, re I don't really revisit all fades and stuff. It's not really my thing. I like to play off the initial activity where it just heats up and case closed. Yeah, it adds up, Paul, right? It adds up like you think it doesn't add up when... And not only that, what about the spreads too, Paul? You're losing money a lot of times on these options, just the spreads, right? From offer to bid where you get stopped out. You're already stopped out before you even got in the trade. Yeah. It's tough. Now, you know, again, options, the risk-reward is uh, a lot better, right? You don't have to put up as much money. But if you can day, if you can day trade the equity, right, it's, you know, my style is a lot more conservative, and it adds up. It adds up. But, you know, my, my, my dent, the, the dents I make to my P&L come off swings. That's, you know what I mean? The day trading is a grind. It's a grind. And you got to, you know, you got to, there are days where, you know, it's peanuts. So you got to, you got to have a passion for the game too, because you go a couple of days without making any money scratch trades. A lot of people get fed up and they're on to a different strategy, right? Me, if I scratch out the week, it doesn't phase me. You know, I can't wait for Monday morning. You know, so you, you got to enjoy the game. So you don't got to enjoy the game. Bouncing around from strategy to strategy, forget it. You'll end up nowhere. RKT, yeah, and I held some. I held a little equity too. I held a little equity. Um, you guys probably know why. It's an IPO, first round of action, right? 
RKT. I, I like it. Where is it? Um, it's what you would call it, right? It's a mortgage. What is it exactly? Hey, right, Bobby. Yeah, more. It's just mortgages, plain mortgage, digital mortgage lending. That's the word I was looking for. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the new economy mortgage play, right? Parent company of Quicken Loans. Yeah, because I heard it was, um, you know, I wouldn't say hot IPO, but there was interest. There was interest. NBA sponsor, huh? So, you know, decent spot, right? No chasing involved. And I'll tell you what, if this thing is down 20 cents tomorrow, 30 cents, and they come after it again, I'll go in for a day trade again, you know? So, yeah, but I felt better with the calls. Yeah, the options, some of them were cheap too. They were cheap. Uh, they hit a couple different, what the hell they hit? Let's see. They hit a couple different lines there. Hold on. What is going on with my charts? I'm going to kill somebody. I think I got to reboot this thing, but uh, hold on. What's the symbol again? RKT. Oh, wait, that was my commentary here. Here's the lines they hit. So you see August 21 calls, 60 cents. September 20 calls, $1.64. I think there was another order. I don't know why it's not on here. Oh, here it is. Yeah, August August 21 and September 20s. So, you know, that's the August 21s. They might have even flipped them. It was a nice move. So we got to see what open interest looks like. You know, we got to see what open interest looks like. Have a good night, Bob. But yeah, you know, I like the IPOs. I like to, uh, I, I look to play them all a little bit because uh, some big, big winners have come up, you know, from IPO sweepers. You know, some big winners. So I like to get my hands on them. All right, guys, any last questions before we wrap it up? Somebody was asking about a Niner. Um, they're just exhaustion signals, upside and downside exhaustion signals, Mr. Tom DeMarc. I don't, I don't get into the whole spiel. All I look at are Niners. You know what I mean? I look at exhaustion signals. Oop, this is not even here. What's going on here? There we go. Uh, but that's all there is. All right. Yep, be good, everybody. Anybody, uh, ZI, I just think it's, you know, I think it's a matter of time, honestly. I really do. I think it's a matter of time. I rolled out to January uh, just so I can sit through earnings and have some exposure to it. You know, you kind of had earnings here in the middle of things, which was a pain in the neck, all right? Even though the numbers were good, but it doesn't matter what earnings. You know, you had this little movement here pre-earnings, and I used it to roll out. Yeah, I wouldn't, this, the offering, you know, you got people who are uh, insiders come out off the lockup and stuff like that. That doesn't concern me. You know, listen, I, I played ZI for, again, like I played RKT. IPO first round of sweepers, right? It caught September action ahead of earnings, had a little pre-earnings run up, and then earnings 
it's sold off. You know, it's not like it's not plan action. You know what I mean? That's why I haven't touched plan. Plan, you know, win or lose, that's a whole different ball game action was. ZI wasn't anything spectacular. It was pre-earning sweeper activity in a new name. You know, even this like RKT, right? The actions doesn't knock you out of the chair. It's small sweeps. But it could be the start of some further action coming in. And, you know, a lot of these names, man, a lot of these names, I got a list of IPO names that when they first car- started catching sweeper activity, they just went Eight poop. Exactly. Exactly, Matt. That's how I look at them. I try to get my hands on all of them. Some, you know, will be big winners. Some okay. Some may be losers. But more than not, like Matt just said, you're going to have some big winners in the middle of it, you know? And they offset everything. You know, I played the Doyu. I sold that a little bit early. You know, all these names, but the, you know, I'll, I'll tell you guys if the action is sharp looking, but you know, these are just small sweeps in IPO names. VRM, that's an IPO. Yeah, 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 yeah VRM. It did, I didn't see any call buying in this, right? We saw a little put buying. Room. So many IPOs, so many IPOs. The next the next little washout or correction or whatever it turns into is going to be really interesting because you have a lot of these names that came public, a lot of decent names that could end up stepping up into a leadership role. You know what I mean? Just like we saw off this crash. That's why I can't, I can't wait. You know, I rather, I maybe sell at least half my plan before a correction comes. If I can have my way, you know, but I'm at, I would actually, I actually can't wait for a washout. I really can't. Right, exactly, Matt. I can't wait, but let me unload everything, please. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Listen, anybody who's new or even um, new on the webinar or even a new member, Go to wallstreetjesus.com. Let me show you guys quick. Even some of you who are members and quick refreshes. So here on the top, strategy, bink. And you can get a little familiar to what we do each and every day, flow-wise. All right, some examples of day trades, you know, how I approach them, what I'm looking for, blah, blah, blah. Um, how to use flow for sentiment purposes, if you're not even looking to trade off the names, all sorts of things. Momentum indicator at a flow. All right, so you could get a little more familiar with this stuff. And, you know, on here, market updates, as you guys know, I post uh, some recap, right? Here's Zoom. Look at the, like, bounce sweepers in Zoom right here. Like, if this is a name you're eyeing, you have it. There are sweeps there, you know, off these dips. Um, no, it's not dark pool. What I mentioned about Netflix was gamma related. Look at this chart. This is really pissing me off. Um, what I mentioned about uh, Netflix was gamma related, meaning gamma was got really low over here. And, you know, usually a little buying can set up a turning point in the stock. So that's what I meant by it. You know, considering where the stock is, you know, gamma was down like if the stock was down here. So a lot of times if you get a reversal, they got to catch up. They got a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Had some life. So, and this is another name. This is another name, you know? A little pull, and you get a snapback rally, right? You got it over here, too. So, there are opportunities out there if, you, if you're looking to be tactical and stay nimble 
there are still a decent amount of opportunities out there. You know, it's a lot less risk involved. You're being quick, and you could avoid getting caught. I don't know why, CW. That's a Twitter thing. I have no idea what they're doing. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. That's been the case for years now. And I still don't know the reason why. But hopefully it'll start working again so you guys can utilize that search on uh, private Twitter. All right, guys, so WallStreetJesus.com. Take a peek. Good luck the rest of the way, guys. Tomorrow, Fed Minutes. Keep an eye out. And then we'll see maybe if things loosen up towards the end of the week and into next week. Have a good night, everybody.